Darren Lovell. Welcome. Glad you're here. That you're here today. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be awesome. I I, I say that in every podcast. I, know. I need to change that. But, um, and he, I, I but they, keep awesome. they keep getting awesome. They keep getting awesome. Well, it's a lot of pressure. I know. It's, it's just going to be pressure. awesome, right? It's going to be awesome, and he's <laughs> delivering it all. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, Darren is uh, exceptional at what he does. We'll get into what he does, and he actually has a, a partner that well, I'm sure we'll be brought up in the conversation. Um, but Darren, with um, what we do on the podcast, we talk about uh, the Hero Edge, the coaching company that I run, and every hero has an origin story. And so um, I want to talk a little bit about your background and how you got started doing what you're doing. This is really a space for entrepreneurs and business owners um, to really just kind of give some value to the people that are listening and maybe get them to the next level of their journey um, to becoming the hero in their own story. So with that, um, what's your origin story? How did you get started doing what you're doing? All those things. Yeah, no, so I'll, I'll take it back a little bit before I got in the mortgage okay. business. So I moved down here from Iowa in, in 1999. Uh, relocation. You're a Buckeye? <laughs> Iowa. Hawkeye. Oh, okay. I, I don't <laughs> Not know. a Buckeye. North, I don't know. <laughs> Big Hawkeye fan. Uh, but I moved down here for Fidelity Investments. They opened up their corporate campus in Westlake. And so I was recruited down here to be part of that opening. So I've been, I was in financial services. I retired. Uh, had a great career at Fidelity, kind of got tired of, of, of the corporate life and, and wanted something more of my own. Uh, so 11, year, 11 years ago, I retired. Uh, you know, the problem was I didn't have enough money and, and I was too young to retire. So, you know, everything at Fidelity, relational sales. And so I, I learned a lot in corporate America that now I apply to the mortgage business. And, and the biggest thing I think I learned is everything. You have to be intentional in everything you do and, and be relational. If you can be intentional and be relational, you're gonna have success. I don't care if it's the mortgage business, it's the car business, it's the real estate business, it's the coaching business. If, if you operate with, with those two things, I think you're, you're gonna be successful in what you do. Love that, love that. So when you got into, how did you how did you decide that, that lending or being a mortgage, how did you decide that was the industry you were gonna step into? Yeah, almost by accident. So at the time, my, my, my wife, now Haiti, uh, was actually in the mortgage business. She had been in both real estate uh, and mortgage, had, had a life change in Florida, so got out of real estate, came here, got her degree, and, and went into the mortgage business. So I got done and I'm like, with Fidelity, I'm like, I'm not exactly sure what I wanna do, but, but I wanna work with people and I, and I wanna help people. Uh, and so honestly, getting into it, I really didn't know if I, if I would have that ability to do that in the mortgage industry. But if you think about it, you know, every day I get to help people. I mean, I still believe that, that home ownership should be part of the America dream, American dream. So, um, so she was a, at a mortgage company. I went out and I talked to the folks and there's like, take your test. So I went out and took the test and just hit the ground running and, and honestly haven't looked back. It, it's been an, an amazing career. It's been an amazing run. I've got a, a great you know, teammate in, in Haiti, but then I've also got a great team that helps support uh, our clients, our, our realtors, as well as our, our, our folks looking to buy or sell a house. I want to I want to go back a little bit because uh, part of what we were you know what we're looking to accomplish here at the closing table podcast is to bring winners individuals that we deem to be successful that are doing something unique to excel or have uh, you know so let's let's go back to the beginning so what what are some of the characteristics things that you've now learning business um, from any career that you've had that that you that you've bottled and you're using to be successful today yeah I, I, you know, I think finding something you enjoy. Right, so it doesn't matter what that is, but, it, but if you enjoy what you do, and from my perspective, if you have the ability to, to change people's lives. I mean, for me, that, that drives me. That's why I get out of bed every single morning is I have the ability to impact in a positive way people's lives. Um, because coming with, with owning a home and, you know, and us providing the financing for that home, it starts to build wealth. We, we, we all know that you know, real estate builds wealth. If you look at some of the richest people and the most successful people in this country, uh, Andrew Carnegie had, had a saying that 90% of all millionaires got there through owning real estate. And, and it's true, it was true then and it's true now. So the ability to be able to do that. So I approach every single day that I'm blessed with the opportunity to help people. And, and I instill that in my team. And so if you put yourself in their shoes, and I, you know, I, I didn't create this thing, but if you put yourself in their shoes, uh, and, and you show empathy and, and you show respect and you show that you're truly vested in, you know, in that individual, you, you're, you're going to be successful in, in whatever you do. I love that. I, and, and I think that um, real estate is, 
I, I tell realtors all the time that we we are blessed to be able to help people with the biggest financial decision of their life. Usually, mm -hmm. it's not always the case, but it usually is. And they they should take it they should take that um, honor appropriately, but then also understand that it's a gift. It's a gift that we are able to we're blessed to to, to be able to lean in and, and come beside. And there's all sorts of parts at that play. You know, we have title people, we have um, uh, lawyers, we have lenders, we have inspectors, we have all sorts of the, the the process of a real estate transaction that we've had on this podcast, and all of us play a part in that same transaction, right? And um, I, I, it, it always baffles me. One is a as just a coach, but then also as a realtor, that realtors don't take that because that to me overcomes a lot of obstacles on why you should make phone calls, why you should reach out to people. Because if you come from a place of value and you understand what you're actually doing, this should be an easy conversation, you know? But yet usually most realtors um, struggle with having consistent business because they think that they're selling, right? right? They think that they're selling a vacuum cleaner, not that there's anything wrong with selling vacuum cleaners, <laughs> right. but the reality is, is that we, I tell them that we, I've never been able to to convince a buyer to buy a house or sell a seller to sell a house that they didn't want to sell. You know, we're really just there for when they're wanting to do that transaction. And then all our job is, is just to lean in and bring enough value that they want us to help. Them. Absolutely. And, um, because it is, and if you take it with that kind of value, it's a, it really is becomes a, a, a gift to be able to be part of that, that piece. It, it, for me, it, it's to me, it's not a job. It's a way of life, mm. you know, and, and it's not just it, what we do on a daily basis. It's, it, it's outside of the business environment. It's it's how you how you treat people, how you treat others, um, and and I, and I think if you operate in that fashion, whether it's in the business world or in the private world, you're, you're going to be more successful because while it, we do we do earn income, right? It is a living for us. It, like you said, it is a blessing. I mean, and I think if you look at it from that perspective, you're going to be successful. We yeah. we're, we're we're lucky to do what we do. Yes, yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, is there anything specific that you brought on from your uh, your years in, in in working with Fidelity that you still use today? Just from yeah, I I think so. One of the I think uniquenesses that I brought with just the experience I had is when I'm looking at somebody and their ability to purchase a house. I'm, I'm looking at it from a holistic perspective. So it's one thing to, to to qualify somebody to buy a house, but are we looking at the entire picture? Are we looking at do they have credit card debt? Um, do they have young kids? Do they need to be saving for college? So I honestly take a step back. And it's all about, are you willing to take the time to help the individual? Are, are you transactional or are you relational? You know, and, and so I'm gonna be relational 100% of the time. So if you just take the time to look at that individual, for me, I'm talking about the nest egg. I'm talking about they've got kids and you know I'm not counting daycare expenses, but you have them, right? So let's look at that when we're looking at a mortgage payment because I may qualify you to buy a $500,000 house, but that's all you're gonna be able to do is live in that house. And, and so that's something you know, that I brought to the table to really look at using my financial planning and financial services background and, and bringing that into the business world. Well, and I imagine it's exactly where I was getting at is I imagine you also help real estate agents realize that because I know I work with a lot of real estate agents that are, they just don't have the financial background. They don't understand, um, you know, so they're not prepared even, even deal with being their own, their own boss, right. you know, and what that means from, <laughs> from a uncle Sam stump, you know, standpoint. So, so yeah, and you're always looking at you know, the tax implications. Right. I mean, you're also looking at creative ways that again, I bring from Fidelity where you've got, you know, where you can draw down on income streams to create income from a retirement plan. And, and you wanna have that conversation if you're pulling from a 401k or from an IRA, there's tax implications, but that's everything I dealt with, you know, in, in the financial services world. So if you bring that to bear, and, and we do talk with the realtors a lot of time about that because that's a little bit outside uh, of what they're accustomed to, but there are a lot of ways, again, if you're just willing to take the time to invest in that individual, a lot of times you can find a way to make it work. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I imagine if I'm a real estate agent, you, you ought to do what you preach, which is own real estate. But at the same time, like everything else you hear, diversify, you really ought to right. you know, have, have some other investments. And Well, it's interesting. When I, when I was at Fidelity, it was mainly stocks, bonds, right. mutual funds. <clears throat> I owned a house, but I didn't think of it as an investment. I didn't think of it as a way to accumulate wealth. But if you look back over the last 50 years, and you guys know what, what's outperformed stocks and bonds and mutual funds, it's real estate. You know, and so it really doesn't matter if there's a downturn or not. Does not. <laughs> over over time, yeah. you know, they're not making any more land, right? I mean, so so real estate over time always outperforms the market. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I would say, you know, that's 
with the market the way it is across the nation, but you know, specifically into individual markets, you know, that's probably the conversation that's happening a lot is should I buy a house now and all those things. But the reality is if your goal is to keep that house for 10, 15 years or whatever, right. um, it's always going to outperform. And you know, there's, there's, you know, depending on the market you're in, but, but most of the major markets you buy it now, it doesn't matter where you buy it, doesn't matter how you buy it. If you buy it, 10, 15 years from now, it's going to be worth more than it is today. So there was a survey that came out about three weeks ago and it asked the top 150 economists in the country, where will home, and this was across the country, not, and they broke it out as well, but um, where will home values be five years from now? And the consensus was 23% higher. So I think what you might hear from mainstream media uh, versus what the reality is, is home values are not going to drop. You're going to gain accumulation of wealth. Uh, again, 23% over five years, that, that's a pretty good number versus the sky's falling. Yeah, plus you get to live in it. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to live in it. <laughs> you get to use it. So. Absolutely. I, every time I buy a stock, I'm like, eh, 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 there it is. <laughs> I don't get a discount when I go to Apple. <laughs> so you don't, you don't have a coach to help you with your well, financial? You know, I, 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 every you know, time I go hey, coach. Apple, every time I go to Apple to, to buy a watch or a thing, <laughs> they never give me a discount because I'm an owner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> that Tesla you're on, you're, you're not getting a discount. No, just, you know, I, I don't get it. Um, it's called dividend. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, and let, let's don't get about Bitcoin. But um, <laughs> so um, knowing a little bit about you and your business model. Um, so talk to us a little bit about your, your team, your lovely wife, um, how you guys do business um, and just that background of how you actually serve your clients. So really three, three, three things we bring. So if you're, you're, your principal core values, it, it's relationship, it's availability, and it's communication. So that is how we have built a, a business that allowed us to be you know, in the top 1% of loan originators in the country last year. You know, and I don't care about that number, but it, it means that we're, what we're doing is successful. Right. It's allowing us to create additional relationship, which allows us to help more families. So on relationship, so what I tell my team and, and, I, and I tell the, the people I have a relationship with, it's never about that one deal. It's never about the buck. And when it starts being about the buck, you need to find something else to do. So we're, we're gonna look and do whatever we can to help that person get in a home if, if there's money we can throw at it, we're going to throw money at it. So whatever you can do to get that individual in the home, it's going to bless you down the road. You know, God knows what we do, right? And, and you're not looking for that, but that's, that's an outcome of what happens. So you've got somebody that's a first time home buyer and never thought they could be in a position to buy and you can help them get into that home. It's going to, you're going to, you're going to get that dividend. You're going to get that blessing somewhere down the road. So somebody who's relational will look at it from that aspect versus I need to make a dollar on, on this deal. So that's that's the first thing. Availability. So there's you know my, my better half Haiti and then we have two other loan officers on the level team. So there's four of us. So that means we can cover a lot of ground. So the commitment we make both to our cli clients being realtors as well as the clients that are looking to to buy homes 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. Wow. So that doesn't mean I'm sitting at my desk. You know, I've got my dinner in there. I got my feet kicked up. But when there's four of you, you can cover more ground. I mean, that's that's just a fact. So we've we set up an internal rotation where, again, I'm going to be on vacation even though I'm still working. Have a doctor's office. Huh? Yeah, everybody's, on, everybody's on call. Yeah, it, it, it is. You know, I mean, the example I give: what, who are you going to call at seven o'clock on a Saturday night? when your client wants to make an offer and wants to know what that looks like from a numbers perspective. So that has been a game changer for us. It's just that availability because I was that individual loan officer trying to gather loan documents, trying to communicate, trying to be available. You get enough balls in the air, you're going to drop it and you're going to ruin relationships because of that. So availability is huge to us. And then communication. It has to be clear and it has to be consistent and it has to be concise. And so if you're communicating with all parties, not keeping anybody in the dark, and I mean listing agent, title company, buyer's agent, buyer, everybody on the, that works with us gets the same level of communication. There, there's nothing in there that's a trade secret. So as things progress throughout a loan process, if you're communicating that information with everyone, uh, you know, think, think about a title company. I mean, sometimes they have no idea what's going on with that loan, but if they're on those milestone and weekly updates, they know where everything's going. A listing agent's not asking a buyer's agent, where are we? So communication, I think, you know, you have to be clear, concise, and it has to be timely. Um, you, you, you can't be reporting information after the fact. So 
those three things, I think, are really what we say, this, this is who we are and this is how we do it and this is why we're successful. So they get the same level of commitment from the levels. Okay. All right. That's nice. You can have that. <laughs> One second. They also have a holiday after this. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> well, and I think to that point, because we, you know, when the people that listen to this podcast, the people that we talk to, um, you know, it, we actually just did a taping and one of the people said that, uh, one of the guests said that, um, that they see the success where they are and they don't realize the work that got there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, coaching entrepreneurs, you know, there, there's a tendency to want to get to, you know, we, we turn, we, instead of looking in the mirror, we look at the, 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 the goal down there and think, well, I want to get that, but they don't really understand that there's a path to that. There's right. a, and we all just think, well, I, you know, I want to have a team. I want to have, I want to be able to do a, that and not have to work that, but they don't realize that probably that's not where you started. Yeah, right? Definitely not. <laughs> definitely you not. You start with a team, you know, you end with a team, but, you, right. but there's a process of building it. And that's the, that's the entrepreneur journey, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I, and I think just like you know, this part of this came from corporate America is w when I got into this business, I, I kind of took a pulse as to what, what most people did and identified those things that, you know, maybe I didn't like, or I wanted to do differently. And, and then we implemented processes and, and then, I'm a big fan of you know, continuous process improvement. Six Sigma, we're never gonna be perfect, but you have to strive to, to be right, and you know, hopefully every time, but knowing you're human, you're gonna make mistakes. So we're periodically checking in, do you like what we're doing? How, how are we doing? You, you can't be afraid to make change because I mean, ultimately, we can think we have the best processes in the world, but if it's not effective and it's not working for you know, the, the end state, then it really doesn't matter what we think. So continuous process improvement is a big part of that. Uh, always looking what we're doing, always looking to refine, uh, never thinking we have all the answers and always willing to learn. I love, I love that. I think uh, to that point, uh, I, one of the things that I realized when I was building my team was it's a good question to ask how we did it's a better question to ask what could we have done better? <laughs> yep. You know, but that's the harder question that most people don't ask because they don't want to hear the answer. Yeah. But that answer actually gives you insight on how to actually continuously improve and continuously make your process better, which at some point, then you're you're moving the you're moving the little things instead of the big things. Absolutely. You've taken you've taken care of all the big things. We uh, we've had a lot of guests on our private podcast that kind of uh, it feels like they knew what they wanted to do from a very early age and they've just they were so focused and they became so successful. Sounds like you've already you know, as finance you've had a couple of different careers, but do you do you, did you you always knew what you wanted wanted to do or kind of help help our guests our viewers our listeners identify hey it's okay if you maybe thought you wanted to do this. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to, you can make a change at any moment, but once you find something, focus, right? I, I would have never thought growing up in a million years, I'd be doing what I'm doing. Yeah. <clears throat> I came from a small town in Iowa, <clears throat> very blue collar, uh, and, and really had no connection with, with the markets or with you know, sales, if you want to call it sales. Uh, even out of college, um, started you know, working at, at UPS. And, you know, just in a management position. So, you know, where I came from and, and, and my family and my background to where I am now, <clears throat> um, I, I had no idea for, for many years exactly what I wanted to do, right? You know, when I grow up, I'm not sure what I want to do. Um, but I think when I got into financial services and I saw the, the value that you could bring to an individual, <clears throat> that really stoked the fire in me. And, and so I knew at that point I wanted to do, to do something that was helping individuals create wealth, uh, generational wealth, and, and being able to just uh, work with people. So I've always been relational. I've always loved to talk. I mean, so I, I knew it was going to be something where I had the capacity to, to talk with individuals and be relational. But for years, I never knew exactly what that was going to look like. And, and once I grabbed onto that, and that was really in the financial services world, I knew I wanted to transfer that same skill set into the mortgage business. Mm -hmm. That's so um, you, you mentioned college. Did you play college ball? I did because you, you're not a slight man. <laughs> I did. I, did. I got a little bit of size. I, I, I played a bit. I played a bit. So I actually played at Missouri Western. Uh, okay. Played foot. Played football. Defensive tackle. Tackle. Okay. Yeah. Right. Made it to my second year and blew out my knee. And, and boy, is, life, is, life, life took me in a different direction. <laughs> isn't that the story of unfortunately most 
Yeah. Uh, of, of, You're one accident for millions. Now. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> it is a contact sport. <laughs> yes, Be, being being a coach in the high school ranks. For, Absolutely. Um, it was one of those things that I tried to ingrain in the boys that go after your dream, but have a have a plan B if it's if it's a sporting dream. That, that, that's ex- you know my you know my son you know Peyton is, yeah. he plays football at Rice and and uh, I, I told him I said you know you go through the statistics how many of them make it I'm like. This is what's going to make it. You know, if you're lucky, you maybe make it to that next level. But you've always got to have your education uh, to fall back on. Well, the funny thing is, I'm not a big believer in life in a plan B because I think it sometimes holds you back from accomplishing your goals. But at the same time, when it comes to things outside your control, and I think athletics is one of those things that you know you're one injury away. You know, and and so <laughs> it's it's in that case, it's like no, you probably need to have a plan. But you, you need to get like you said, you need to get the degree. You need to you know apply it, all those things because you know hopefully you get to that level, whatever that it level right. wants to be. But if nothing else, you you come away with a great ability to do something that you still enjoy doing. Absolutely. You know, so. Uh, do you have any marketing strategies that you suggest for uh, maybe in this market right now for for I guess for some for our for our realtor viewers? I don't yeah, know. I'm I mean, thinking we have so many people that are listening to this podcast, not just real estate agents, but I, I, I think real real estate not. I mean, I think so. You know, right now it's 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 an interesting time in in our country, right? I mean, uh, for, for for many different reasons, but I mean, I think you know, taking it for just the, the real estate, you know, you the interest rates are higher than they have been in the past. Historically, they're still okay. What we have done is we've actually taken an aggressive strategy. Um, so we're not gonna sit there and just wait for things to get better, we're gonna make things better. So and we had a, a great year last year, uh, and we're gonna build upon that. So we've actually been looking to expand the, the number of relationships. So if I look at that from a, a realtor capacity, it means I need to be talking to more relationships. If I just sit there and, I, and I'm woe is me, then, I, then I'm woe is me. But I, I think if somebody who wants to be successful and wants to grow their business, the more the more contacts I have, the more communications I have. And, and so what that looks like to me is we're, we're having more meetings this year than, than we had last year. So you're always looking to grow because you know when, when, when you stay flat, you, you, you really are, you're, you're going to shrink, yeah. right? I mean, so you, you've got to always be growing if that's what you want to do. I mean. But if you want to continue to grow your business, to continue to grow your footprint, um, you know we've got a sizable operation out at, in Amarillo, and we were we just got back. Uh, we were there Monday through Thursday, and we did 26 meetings uh, with realtors in four days and a happy hour. And so I'm going to maximize the number of opportunities, the number of times I'm up to bat, uh, because you know, let's face it, you know whether there was a, we were at a meeting, the stat. 40% you know, loan officers have to renew their license every January 1st. And 40% of them did not renew wow. in January of 2023, which I hate that. But if you look at the flip side of the coin, that's opportunity mm-hmm. as well. And I think we'll see that in the realtor world as well is the, those individuals that were maybe holding a license. It's not as easy as it was a year or 18 months ago, right? Because of the market, because of interest rates, be, because of the inventory situation for a multitude of reasons. So. Um, I, I think that creates opportunity uh, in the realtor field as well, but you just have to have the activity to support the growth. You can't wait for business to come to you. You've got to go <laughs> it's get not, it. It's not going to happen. And, and, and I know that we've had a discussion off camera um, that we talk about, but almost every- I business- thought we weren't going to talk about that. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. We were on camera. Yeah, it's on camera. <laughs> yeah that's funny. Uh, so, uh, but one of the things that we've, we've discussed, and I know we both heard, is that almost every major business that has gained market share did it in the downturn. And, and so um, there are, there's a saying out there that I use a lot, and I didn't create it, but it's, um, there are people that make things happen, there are people that watch things happen, and there are people that look around and go, what the hell just happened, <laughs> right? And um, you know, there is a portion of, of any entrepreneurial space, whether you're in lending, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in um, you know, building widgets, that they're going to sit and go, what the heck happened, yep. and not do anything, or get out of the business because they don't have a path to, to continue doing what they're doing, and to that point, that becomes opportunity for the people who are going to make things happen. It does, um, it but has. you've got it. But you've got to take that. You've got to take the initiative. That's that's the time to actually put your head down. And you know, Grant Cardone has a book called Ten X. He, yep. he became famous on Ten X, and that's what it's about. Is you whatever you think you need to do, multiply it times ten because that's what you're going to need to do to actually scale. Yep. And um, most people don't understand that. That's you know why everybody else is grumbling. 
you just keep your head down and you fly right past them. But um, it takes effort and it takes focus. What do you think about COVID? So we, we doubled our... <laughs> We doubled our business from, from 2020 to 2021. We doubled it again from 21 to 22. And, and our goal is to double it again in, by the end of 23. And, and part of that is we're, we're just keeping our head to the grindstone and, and we're working hard. And, and what we say is what we do, right? You, I mean, you could say that you're going to do everything, but if you don't do everything you say, you're going to ruin relationships. And so we've been incredibly blessed uh, over these last three years to significantly grow our business. That's awesome. So when I hear that, I... I I imagine, well, we, if you're going to double the business, you need to double the number of people handling it. But how do you manage to, to do that and yet keep providing the same level of service? Yeah, and, yeah, and so you know, I believe that it doesn't matter what business, but if you're in relational, the relational business, there's only so many relationships that you truly can have. There's a number, right? You know, what, what's that number? And, and when you get past that, then I think you have the ability to destroy relationships. Because to be, to be in a relationship or be relational, you have to be relational with those with those individuals. And, and that's our model is we're gonna sit down, we're gonna have breakfast, we're gonna have coffee. I'm gonna learn about your business and how we can plug into your business and you know, as a realtor, grow your business because when your business grows, my business grows. So that means you're actually meeting with them. You know, I hear so many times, so many stories. Uh, Amarillo is a great example. So, you know, Amarillo is more of a banking uh, environment. It's traditional, it's nine to five. And, and we made a splash out there about 18 months ago. Uh, and we go over every six weeks. And in two or three months in, uh, the, the person we're meeting with is like, I used the bank for seven years, I never met him. And you've taken me to lunch twice. Well, I'm, 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 I wanna learn about that individual, their kids, their, their hobbies, their needs. Cause that's truly a relationship where if, if, if you're just punting business over to someone and, and you're not getting any reciprocity, that, that's, that's a one-sided relationship. So, so with that, it's a, it's a good thing to have in that we, we, we face some, some growth challenges and we just hired in Amarillo uh, another loan officer and, and for our team. And we did it because the number of relationships we were able to cultivate in a very small time frame was, was gonna place some pressures on us. And, and the last thing, I would rather not get into a relationship with this individual and keep the integrity and relationships I have with my existing relationships then, then risk taking on another relationship and harming these relationships. So we're very conscious about, I believe you always have to hire ahead. You have to be willing to take a risk and, and hire ahead, even though that may be the profits you know, aren't as good. I think if you hire ahead you, and you anticipate and, and you stick to your business plan. And so we hired ahead both on our internal team uh, as well as our loan officer team in anticipation, even with no refinance activity happening, doubling your business uh, was, was partly double your, I, I've got a lot more relationships than I had, but I also grew my team because if I didn't, I'm gonna ruin some relationships that I have. So these markets that you've, that you've built, did you, did you build them because you've traveled there or they, they approached you and all of a sudden now you're making the effort to, to conquer them? So I, I firmly believe God got us to Amarillo. It, it, the, the story, I, it, I won't speak. Bob Morton. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we sing that every time we're on our way out there, though. And we stop at a Dairy Queen on our way out there and we take we a picture. So uh, an agent that lived in Amarillo had a life change and, and moved to Dallas-Fort Worth. And the first realtor she talked to, she asked, who's your lender? And they gave our name. And so we met with her and she developed a team here and she also still had a team in Amarillo. And she said, you know, the way, I always use the word different, the way your team does business is different than what I was accustomed to in Amarillo. So she sets us up with her team out there. One thing leads to another. Um, and over the course of the last 18 months, we've now got about 40 relationships wow. in Amarillo. That's awesome. 30% of our business is, is coming from Amarillo. What? So I would have never, I had never been, love the song, had never <laughs> had that. So, saw him in My concert. wife will appreciate that. She's saw him in concert just, just a little while ago, <laughs> the king. Yeah, we were at the same concert. I know, we were there, yeah. <laughs> All I'm looking three at, of us were there. Uh, I'm, like, I'm like, Kevin Sherry here. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I, just a side note, if George Strait's here, the answer is Kevin and Sherry there. Yeah. That's my wife. So I would, had never been to Amarillo, had no intention, Not nothing wrong against Amarillo. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt that you guys like to travel, right? No, nope. we love to, we are the traveling lender. I love it. Yeah. We, you know, we, we like to travel a lot. We like to enjoy life. We're always working while on vacation because my wife says I can't sit still because I enjoy what I, it, you know, you, 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 people hear this and they're like, really? 
I enjoy what I do. It is, and, and I know you, Kevin. I, I, when you're on vacation, you're working. Yeah. I, I know that because we've been on vacation together, and we're both working. So yeah, I, and I mean that's the, that's the funny thing is we broke bread in Cabo. We didn't we didn't even we didn't plan to be in Cabo at the same time. We weren't at the same resort, but um, we found out that we were both working in Cabo. And my saying is, if you've got to have an office. The view of the ocean is not bad, you know. So I, I, you know, yes, there are downtimes, but you know, the great thing about when you work on and and you enjoy what you do. First, I mean, that's I think that's the baseline. Is is I tell people that um, back in twenty um, two thousand and five was the last time I worked somewhere that I did not want to work because I just made it a point that I was going to do what I enjoy doing. Now, yes, there's work parts to it that sure. you don't necessarily enjoy things like that, but life's too short for, for people to do things um, that they don't want to, if there's an option and there's always an option, but you've got to be able to sacrifice. We talked about this, you know, what you, when you say yes to something, you say no to something else. And so you've got to be able to sacrifice certain things to get there. But once you do, whether it was me being on the football field as a coach or me being a realtor, me being a, a coach now uh, in business, um, the reality is if you enjoy what you're doing, it's really not a work, what people would think is work. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's right. It, it, it isn't work, right? It, it's, it's what we enjoy mm -hmm. doing. I mean, is it working? Yeah. But the mindset has to be, I'm getting to help people. And I, I know I keep coming back to that, but we, we truly always said it before we get to help you. We get the opportunity to help people. Not everybody gets And isn't it great to help people when you're in a swimsuit? I'll tell you, it, it's nice. I mean, you it, get a little, little, uh, little umbrella there, I, you know, you're looking out the ocean. I'll say, it on the, I'll say it on this film. It doesn't suck. It does not. <laughs> well, and I, it sounds like something I need to go on vacation with no, us. No, right. <laughs> and, and I need to know what you do to stay in shape. So, I mean, is there any, any, any personal goals you want to share with that, with the viewers? Because if you're traveling that much, how, how do you mentally Stay prepared and when you fit. follow him up, when you follow him on social, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so part of our choice on where we're going and where we're staying is what kind of gym it has. That, that's that's one thing. Uh, my, my goal is I'm 57 years old um, and I have a goal that when I turn 60, I'm, I'm going to compete. Uh, in a bodybuilding contest. And we really wanted him to say that on camera. Right. So there's a source of accountability. <laughs> I know. The world. Like, do I have the to world. say this? Like, yeah. <laughs> do I have now to? We have put it on film that we can <sighs> share with everybody. <laughs> I, I have a, a couple of friends that have been pushing me for years, right? And it's all about making that commitment. Yeah. Now, now I, I guess it's on yeah, film, it and then so now <laughs> now I've got to do it. You know, if you're watching now or three years from now, follow up. Let's uh, let's uh, I'll be know, back. Hit him up on social media and kind of figure out where where he's That's at. Right. He's, See if I can, one pack, two hey, pack. Three, who there knows? I don't know. There we go. <laughs> no no pack over here. It's and all when, good. And when you do follow him on social, you'll realize that he has a partner that is 100 percent invested in that goal. I'm sure. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, I love it. I'm listen. The, 30 minutes just flew by yeah, and it's, you know, it's nice when you're having fun. Yeah. I mean, we just, we want to really uh, thank you for being here. Um, we always ask for all our guests. So, okay. If somebody's trying to get a hold of you, find you on social media, how can they, uh, how can they do that? Yeah. My, I always give my cell phone. I don't even have a business phone. It's 817-487-7110. Uh, you could also reach me by via email at it's the level team at cardinalfinancial.com. Um, of course, I'm on social media all over the place on Facebook, but my wife manages all that because she's the <laughs> she's the marketing guru. Now, are you on but, Facebook and stuff as a level team or, or Darren level? Or? Darren level and the level team, both, okay. both. But if you need to contact me, you know, like I said, my phone's right there. I heard a ringing earlier. Uh, it's 8 a.m., 9 p.m. If I don't pick up the phone, it means I've eaten dinner. Uh, but I, I shut it off at 9 p.m., but I truly do mean that. So you can call me at 8 o'clock at night. I'm going to give you a call back. Well, we appreciate you being here. I am Carlos Wolpman with Providence Title, uh, bringing excellence to each real estate transaction. We want to make sure that if you're watching uh, or following us, uh, we're on YouTube and Spotify via video. And you can also listen to our podcast on Apple, uh, Anchor, and Pandora. Of course, we're here with the Kevin Harris. Coach, how can somebody get a hold of you? Real easy, thekevinharris.com. Uh, on Facebook, it's the Kevin Harris. On Instagram, it's the Kevin Harris One. Thank you for joining the clo uh, the Closing Table podcast, and we will see you at the Closing Table. Take care.